Hey Ruganath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Grandma Terry's apartment in New York City, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator of the Bhakti Center in New York, Kosti Wadas. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to New York, New York. Hanging out with Grandma. Let me see if I can drag her around the show, but it's not going to be easy. How are you, Kostuba? You can't speak very much, so. <clears throat> well, let's let's I'll see. Talk to them. Oh, not bad. It's not see. bad. Yeah. You know, it's like touring with the band. Just would wake up, can't speak all day. Got to shut my mouth, suck on licorice root, drink honey water, and then at the time of the show, ah, see what comes out. <laughs> Scream for an hour or so, and then I know do, do it, again. it all over again. It's a horrible feeling, especially as a devotee. It's like okay, I go with that. Because I'm not a good chanter in my mind when I have to chant Japa. If I do it in my mind, my mind just says, nope, we're not going to listen to the holy name. We're going to go <laughs> th- this direction and that direction. I need to really hear myself chanting even a little to keep my mind focused. Um, good morning, Miss Mara. We're all, morning. we're all in different locations. Mara's at her house because Duba is in New York and I'm in my mom's in New York City. We're coming off this incredible retreat at the Bhakti Center, which was, uh, I don't know, I think a lot of people put it, the the retreat helped you um, sort of digest what was going on because it's really beautifully overwhelming. Um, So the the, the retreat put up a good like container for it, I felt, um, and that was the feedback we got. But there was something, and and Jonavi, had, was at our closing and our opening, which is really nice. Radna Swami was at our closing and our opening, which is very nice. And the backdrop of bhakti yoga in New York City was just like an amazing. Uh, it was an amazing feeling. You feel like okay, bhakti's taken over the world. That's that was was the feeling. And it was like almost like family reunions for our Zoom community. Mm. Get that vibe. I, I did. I felt it was a um. I, I felt a little bad because my voice was gone most of the time. Yeah. And so I couldn't really talk with people. <clears throat> um, but at the same time, I've, it made me maybe a little bit more observant. And well, um, some of your other senses were sharp. <laughs> maybe. Perhaps. And uh, so part of me was feeling like a little um, worried uh, or a little regretful that I couldn't be there more for people. But I was it, from my observation and from what I was hearing from people that were on the retreat, it really seemed like for many a dynamic new experience in their life of bhakti. Um, right. Even if they had been before, sometimes it's like it's the next level, you know. Yeah. And um, it, it seemed like a real friendship maker. I, I just saw people connecting left and right, which is really nice. And then I also felt. It was a bit like a commute, like we were all serving together as a community because yeah. we had our table set up in Washington Square Park in, in the midst of the whole thing. And we had people leading, many of our people led Kirtan. Normally, to, to get a spot as a leader, as that okay. thing, you got to be like some big time. <laughs> yeah, there's, 
there's some there's some definitely some rock star Kirtan people that are like, wow, this is like the Mick Jagger of Kirtan. We've got people like that in our life, in our world, and we love them. But it was like these were all our, you know, our younger devotees, most un- uninitiated devotees who, who just have a heart for singing. And chanting and, in public, singing, and chanting in public. in public, and and we just kept them, or we kept them in rotation, one after another. So, so we had a, a table with um, information and merch, and with lots of cards, especially for the podcast. Lots of cookies uh, and prasad, cookie, lots of cookies. We had people chanting, sitting and chanting, people dancing and chanting, people walking around passing out the cards to the eager audience, mm. and. Um, to, all together, it was just like a dynamic family kind of uh, presentation. I think we can, it gave me visions for next year, like how we can like expand and really make it dynamic. Yeah, I think every year it's building and growing. Next year, we need some bigger plan. We need it. Yeah, I, I'm working little, on it already. A little stage, maybe. A no, oh. a little stage, a little stage diving, perhaps. Oh, okay, okay. I'll we'll get Bobby Marchand stage diving. That would be good. And, you know, <laughs> there was that one... Um, the I mean, Chief and Lori in the pit. I could see them. Wait, because dude, I got, I got, I got to say, what? watching people carry those banners, it, you know, it, it's such a funny thing. First of all, carrying banners, you only do it to protest things. <laughs> and we were watching uh, all of our Sage Group. Car- they have these banners, like, uh, like protest signs, but there's just pictures of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Jagannath, Lord Nityananda, and those other things. They're sort of like. Uh, chakras on a stick or Vaishnav uh, T-Log on a stick, symbols on a stick. And we're all sort of like, yay. It was like, it was a bunch of like, almost like children waving a banner. In the old days, they used to go to a baseball game and wave, wave a banner for the Yankees. This was like waving Krishna's <laughs> ba- banner. Yeah. And you know, there were certain moments. Uh, there's several kirtans are really, you did a great one, Ragnath. You really had it going. Then you went into your, your, I mean, you're so um, attuned to giving a spiel between songs as like uh, with your bands. Mm. And then you did it there and you had a large crowd and you really spoke from the heart, really deep stuff, actually. And uh, and uh, it's, I, a complete I think, bl- it's a complete blur. I don't remember any of it. You don't remember <laughs> that? You. And you're saying I, like we chant, uh, you know, like on, uh, you know, from the heart. This isn't a mechanical thing that we do. We sing from the heart. And you said something like a aloof to public opinion now let's do this right let's do it again ready and then you went back into it and everyone's like ah, you're gonna... uh so there's that there's a few other kirtans that were that just reached certain heights but perhaps the most epic moment was when damana priya was uh singing and it was a nice kirtan and then i, it shoved, I shoved my son rocco in there i don't know if you picked up on oh, that. he was he was playing Murdanga like, very nicely yeah, i was like rocco get in there is your chance and, and the thing kept growing and growing and growing and then Radha Swami like magically appeared and then it just took off and it was like it felt like there it felt like the whole world was chanting it was like there are hundreds of people there just totally getting into it and it just get going higher 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 yeah it was amazing you know and I've seen some posts of that on social media that they don't really get just how epic that that moment was it was huge Dominar Bria broke away and was just into into tears and she just said, I don't know what just happened. And it was she's the and you think about it, she's the leader of the Kirtan. But her yeah. mood behind it was like something was ta- something was taken over. Right. Something was taken over. <clears throat> it wasn't me. It it had nothing to do with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have to emphasize that these Kirtan leaders. They're not trying. They're not buying for center attention. Most of them don't even ask. Can I lead? Can I lead? Most of them just get. OK, I would just point. OK, Cody, I want you to lead. Patrick, I want you to lead. Bobby Marchand, I want you to lead. It, it, it was like, that's how it happened. Kylie, I want you to lead. And we all took they all just went up sort of like on order. They're yeah, not right to serve. They, yeah, to serve. It's It's not like they were trying to be the center. And you can pick up on that. That that becomes your service to lead and to step into it. Right. It's not because they're center center attention hogs, not at all. It, and it was quite beautiful. And you picked up on that. And Damodar Priya picked up on it because she felt like something magical happened around her that she was just happened to be caught up in. Yeah, like you know that that was the beauty of it. Yeah, she's sitting on. We had these. We had a big section. You know, mats laid out, 
and she's sitting in the center of the only person sitting down and everyone else is like jumping around like crazy and she's just sitting there just singing eating yeah. the thing and it was yeah it was uh it was beautiful beautiful thing to see oh. AJ Wonderful. Sullivan just pointed posted a beautiful photo on our zoom board hey zoom or hey others out there if you're another out there and I met a lot of others out there this week um if you want to get on zoom it's fun join us at 5 a.m eastern time or 6 a.m 6 a.m eastern time Monday through Friday email Mara wisdom of the sages 108 at gmail gmail.com you know, you know, it was so it was so power packed. Like at a certain point, Mara goes, "Okay, I need to go back to the temple and just lay down." And I was like, "Are you crazy? What? Why? What? Why would you?" And I was almost got mad at her, but, but I realized, like, you know, it was a very long day, and I for some reason those crowds, I just got surcharged and surcharged and surcharged. I felt like I could have kept going for hours. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at that. Do you see that Greg put up a photo right now in the chat? It, it, oh, oh, wow. Yeah, this are beautiful. Yeah, that's what happens when you join Zoom. You get to look at our chat board, which is very fun and very distracting. A little too fun. Um, another thing that happened, you said you met many others. I did as well. And I was, you know, I, I had the little sign that said I lost my voice because people start talking to you and you can't respond. So, And you get tired of trying to tell them you lost your voice. So I just hold up the sign. Um. But uh, again and again, over you know, I was there from noon till maybe earlier, eleven thirty or so, until uh, five thirty. Yeah, and I don't know how many times during the day I would hand someone the card, like our you know our wisdom of the sages card. Yeah, and someone would look at it like oh interesting, and then they go oh I listen to you guys all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it kept happening all day. Hold. <laughs> So, yeah, I, nice I met so many others. You know who's a great other out there? Uh, we, me and Mara were um, going back to the Bhakti Center, and we ran into Jai Girid Hari. Oh, Jai Girid Hari says, my mother, who, who doesn't claim to be a devotee at all, she says she listens every day. Oh. <laughs> and, 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 he's, <clears throat> and he's, he, he says he listens every day as well. Shout and also another Hari's funny mother and her entire family. Yeah, another um, funny side note was, you know, Marilyn, M Mara, Marilyn, Mara brought the Shravanam scarves down. She forgot them. And then someone else brought them all the way to the festival site for her to sell at our table. These are the scarves. If you don't know, she, she knits these scarves during the podcast. So we call them Shravanam scarves because we're hearing while she's knitting. She's hearing while she's knitting. And so she had six scarves to lay out at the table and we forgot to send them or put them on the table. So we were just like, oh, what a waste of time bringing these and having people trek them all. And so we went into Jai Girid Hari. He would said, I really wanted to get one of those scarves. He goes, oh, well, well, we have them upstairs. He goes, I'll buy four of them right now. Yeah, <laughs> he bought four of them, yes. Before he'd even seen them. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's seen them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it, yeah, it was a great day, and those others are real. They're out there. Mm. All right, so we have a little nugget today, but before any nuggets, Miss, Missy, do we have any announcements? We do. We have Bhakti Recovery Group meetings today at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 9 p.m. Eastern time. All right, great. And if people need more information on that, they can go to bakhtirecoverygroup.com and the online meeting list is there with the Zoom code and everything. Okay. All right. Great. Um, stupid, there's a request on the message board about uh, where to get the t-shirt that you're wearing that says matchless oh, gifts. Um, I, you know, it was a gift, but we had a table set up next to us that was it, matchless gifts. This is the 26 Second Avenue. That's a, the original temple that Prabhupada started just a storefront. Um, this was a gift from Theo, who's a, a, an incredible artist, and I think he designed the shirt. Oh, cool. um, But I would just try to contact 26 Second Avenue, match those gifts, and, and hopefully they could help you find it. I, otherwise, I don't know what to say. All right. Uh, Mary, you want to say our announcements, what's coming up at the farm? And uh, I've got a special guest I just want to bring on for a moment. She's 90, oh. about to be 97 years old. Here she is. Well, let's get her. She's welcome, Grandma Terry. Everybody. What? Wait, <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. They're all waving to you. They're all waving. Oh, really? Hi. 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 <laughs> yeah, they can see you. Oh, You're right. <laughs> you look great. 
thank you. Yeah. Um, Grandma, how long have you been in New York for? How long have you been in New York City for? 96 years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? Brooklyn. Okay. What here here this is uh, this is a whole podcast about uh you know we study Krishna consciousness spirituality. He's got 10,000 viewers a day listen and uh, they're all sort of new to it. Uh, what was your first opinion when you saw me getting into it? Were you worried? Was it good? Was it bad? What was your opinion? No, I really didn't know what you were up to. <laughs> yeah. But I learned later, which is okay with me. Yeah. Uh, you grew up very religious? Fairly, fairly religious. Before you were married or after you were married? Before, before. Before. What, what does fairly religious mean? Well, I used to go to church with not my own mother, my my neighbors usually. She would take her daughter and I would go along with her. And this was during the week in the evening. We go to a little thing. We say some prayers. And that's really all it was. You go to church during the weekdays, not not Sundays or sun yeah, Sundays I went to. Every went every sounds like you went every day. Every Sunday, yes. Okay. I thought you said during the week you also went to church. I did. I did. I so was, that's very religious, I think. In the evening, we would go to church like at 7 o'clock. Which we, church did you go to? I used to go to St. Francis, which is in, near near Greenpoint yeah. in Brooklyn. Are they the ones that do the parade out there in Williamsburg every year and they bring out the... Well, it's a long story. Since I lived in that area, I wound up going to Williamsburg High School, and it was a very Jewish-oriented group, and maybe in my class there would be six people only who were non-Jewish. Huh. became a, It was a very Jewish neighborhood. Was it an Italian neighborhood, too? No, that was Williamsburg. Okay. North side. That side. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, then when you got married, was dad very religious? He was pretty religious, yes. I remember chanting rosary after dinner for Lent. When we went to church with you on Sunday, you were the only one who would say, Amen. <laughs> church would hear him. Good boy. I would just scream, Amen, randomly. No, well, we, the priest would say it. Then you would repeat it after him. <laughs> I still say that. I say, Jai. It's sort of similar. Amen. Jai is sort of similar to Amen. <laughs> um, I guess <clears throat> where I live was, is now called Bushwick. When oh. I was a little girl, they never called it Bushwick. Huh. Okay. I lived on Graham Avenue. And. Uh, Have a Meyer. That's where P.R.E. Mohan is from, Rogo. Okay. All right. Nice. And um, and the religion. Uh, I just want to go into the religious aspects of growing up Catholic. And you met Dad at a Catholic summer camp. Yes. Yes, I did. I well, when I that was a long time ago because I was a, a member of the Carol Club, which is a very old club. I don't think think it's in existence anymore. But they had a place in New York City that we would go to during the week for whatever classes they had, like photography, mm. things like that. And then on the weekends, they had a summer place up in Pauling, New York. And we'd spend us, I spent a lot of summers there. And it was very, very reasonable, very cheap. It was all girls. All girls at that time. Yeah. Well, even when I went to high school, it was all girls. Then how did you meet your husband yeah. there? How did, how did you meet your husband there? Well, they had a lot of sports. We played volleyball. We had a pool. We played tennis. There was everything there. How did you meet your husband there? Well, asked me to dance or something. Oh, uh -huh. it, uh, the men would sometimes come over. Yeah, you know what they—they'd have events. There were several men boys camps nearby. They would invite them over to come and dance with us. This is way they could meet each other. They were very in a strict. nice environment. They didn't let everybody in. You had to be a Catholic. 
you had to have a good background. If you were in trouble, it was no trouble at all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> bad. The way we're living today. How do kids? How do kids get into so much? What's, why are kids in so much trouble nowadays? You know, I think there's not much for them to do. Yeah, this is you can see. There's a good. You, you know, had a good setup there with the camp the bus, and the. You know yeah. where they do a lot of things. We used to do so many things. Yeah. You know, and we worked during the holidays giving Christmas gifts out and dating. What was dating like? This is, a, this is interesting. I mean, <laughs> right. I think this is an interesting topic. Prying now. Let's... Dating was very different for me because I came from an Italian family and my father believes if the first boy you brought home, you would marry. Huh. That rule. That's right. You don't like that. I don't like that rule because I didn't want to get married right away. So every time I had a date, I would bring somebody up. He can't believe it. And it's a different guy every time. <laughs> <laughs> but he never said anything. But, you know, some, some fellows were very nice. And they talked to my father. They'd be talking to my father all night long. And I'd get bored just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a different way to go. It was, and it and it wasn't like dating nowadays. No, 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 no. They brought take came to get you. They brought you wherever you went to eat or dance or whatever, and then they bring you back home. And you could be dating a boy from the Bronx, and he'd have to come on a subway to pick us up, then bring me out, then bring me home again. That was a <laughs> long, long it's, thing. It's funny you say that. I remember when I was growing up in the eighties. I had two friends, a girl and a guy, a boyfriend and girlfriend, and the girl lived in the Bronx and, and the guy lived in Queens. And her father said she's got to be home by a certain time every night. And he used to have to go the whole way up, way up in the North Bronx to, yeah. to drop her off. Yeah, that that happened a lot. But there was no living. When did living with each other before you were? Oh, no, my God. Never, 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 really. never. <laughs> <laughs> A new way of life today. Culture just shifted, and then we're like, oh, we're just going to live with our boyfriend and live with our girlfriend. Never, never. Not when I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> and you never left your home until you, you got married. You would live at home the whole time. Of course, you also brought some of your paycheck home. Today, the kids are in college. They're not even working, they, and the parents get, <clears throat> send them to college. You know what I mean? There's no money coming in, but yeah. everybody's needs money to go out interesting it's very interesting as and uh, times have changed she, One my, thing, my, my mother told me yesterday that her parents yeah. were betrothed at a young age when they, when they were born <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> they were betrothed when they were born. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's true. It's true. Oh my God! <laughs> I thought they, I thought they'd wait at least wait till they were five years old. <laughs> yep, I guess it's it's just a different way of living. It's like probably they were they lived in a village, right? They lived in a small village in Italy. They lived on a farm. They all worked on the farm, so they really knew these people. You know, they knew their right. backgrounds. They came from the same town. Well, that's what happens now. You meet some person, they're very attractive, and next thing you know, you find they're insane. Yeah, you're married, and you're saying, I don't know if, if I married who, who you are anymore, and that kind of thing, and none of that back then. You knew that person well. Yeah, yes. you had to know them well. Yes. Someone's asking the question, what is betrothed? Like, betrothed means you will marry this person. Engaged. when you. It's like an arranged marriage. Yeah. Yeah. It is, yeah, you wouldn't, yeah, so you, they just, ex at a certain age, they would get married. They, 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 they didn't. They didn't. Have, it wasn't a child marriage. It was a marriage. <laughs> yes, yes. But when they got older, I used to call it the football wedding. You ever hear of that? No. Football. Well, in those days, not everybody had money, so for a wedding, they would make sandwiches. They'd have them made to order, and uh, we would bring that to the party. And they then they served maybe some beer and maybe some wine and soda, of course. And 
what happened. Everybody was poor. If they came to your wedding, they would give you maybe $3 as a gift. They could only afford. I think that's what you gave me in my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a tradition. Okay, you want to hear something really crazy? Yeah. Not crazy. Wonderful. Mom had a visitation when after she gave birth to me. Oh. Yes. You told me it. <laughs> well, I guess I can. You tell to. I can't remember what it was. He said Jesus came. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sharing that story. I don't remember. I don't <laughs> remember. You know what I remember? A very poor man came to our apartment. Um, I was married then, recently married. And he all he asked was for food. And I really thought that was Jesus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ragnar, what are you doing? <laughs> Wasn't the story? Be careful. <laughs> you told me that when I was born, Jesus appeared to you. I can't tell you the story because I don't remember it. Oh, well, I remember it. That hey Zeus, hey Zeus, the plumber that? came over. Rogan, no, he didn't it say wasn't Jesus. Hey Zeus, the plumber. It was <laughs> Jesus as he looked. You know what? I can't remember. Mom, you got to write these things down. <laughs> I'm waiting for your book. Rogan, Jesus comes. So many of the, these great souls come to your home. It's like you can't remember them all. Yeah, I I felt that way. I was very much attracted to. Those kind of stories. Yes. Seven kids, seven kids grew up during the depression. She's doing, she's doing great now. Going to be 97 this year. Yep. No aches, no pains. No, true. You, and you do yoga now, right? Yeah, I do it sort of because it's, you know, none of us my age can get on the floor. I mean, I can get on the floor, but then we have to get up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem with yoga. You got to get up sometimes. Going to a therapist once for something, and the young boy took me in to take care of me. He puts me on the floor. Doesn't know that as you're older, you can't get up. <laughs> Mom, I love you. Thanks for joining us. And we're gonna go. We, yeah, it, it's a great day. Thank you. It's a beautiful day for a beautiful day, Mom. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Sorry, I almost fell over and knocked you down there. I saw that, Raghunath. That was dangerous. Oh, my but God. Now I she know. Didn't the, she didn't tell the Jesus story. I thought she was going to tell the Jesus story. She doesn't remember, Raghunath. She doesn't remember. You said, after I was born in the hospital, Jesus, Jesus appeared to you. <clears throat> and, and, you were, and I said, were you dreaming? And you said, no, I wasn't dreaming. I had a conversation. He asked me how I was. Okay, it's coming back now. It's coming back. It wasn't the guy who came to the door and who was poor. And you said, I thought that was Jesus. That's different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trying to dredge that one up before the show is over. <laughs> okay. That was nice, huh? Yeah. All right. That was the squirrel. Okay. I was just thinking, you know, out there in Williamsburg, they have that... Um, the fest. I mean, I hope I pronounce it right, but it's like the fest of the, the gigolo. Right, the gigolo. I don't know. You know that in Williamsburg, it's like a Catholic festival of the saint, and they bring him out. Like there's thousands of people, and they got him up on a huge palaquin. You don't know that? I don't know. I didn't go. It's a big thing out there. I didn't it's go. It's like a ratiatra. But I will say that it's pretty interesting that she went to. I never heard that that you should go to church every day. My grandfather did that. Yeah, you go to church every day. You didn't. You didn't move in with your partner. There was no premarital sex. You have to drop off the lady and then bring her back. And then, right, they, you go out and then you got to bring her back home. And they, and they wouldn't just let anybody in those. And they don't let things. anybody in. And they, they met in the Catholic camp. Met in the Catholic camp. <laughs> oh, I'm glad we finally got her on the show. Okay. You want to go into our nugget today or was that our nugget? Um. Well, the nugget is so closely related. Maybe because we've gone, we've gone a long time without getting into it. Like, Today's theme, I think today's theme will drag out over tomorrow, too. Okay. So let's read this nugget. It's a great nugget. Okay. And, um, and the whole topic, I think, is a rich one for us to dig into. All right, great. 
Okay. Um, oh, I'm looking at Mara's messages, and now I got to look at your messages. I was like, that can't be the nugget. I'm charging the car. Okay, here it is. Who's it from? This is from Black Elk. We've quoted him many times. Black Elk, I tell you, Raghunath. Let's bring Black Elk on the show. <laughs> He's no longer with us. <laughs> we'll have to, but um, but when he speaks, people listen. Yes, and I listen, and I he speaks. You know, sometimes from another spiritual tradition, you f you feel the parallels. You see the parallels. Yeah. Right? With him, it's so clear that this man, though he never picked up the Bhagavad Gita or the Srimad Bhagavatam or the Upanishads, he understood so much of the message that was there in them. Mm. Um, you know, through his own tradition, through his own um, time in nature, you know, through his own hearing from his elders, you know, and so on, they saw the same thing they understood the same thing Mo most of us are running through this world not understanding anything hardly understanding hardly penetrating seeing only what's on the very surface i i i hear from one tradition about people seeing under the surface and they're saying what they're seeing right. and then i hear from black elk in another part of the globe another air he's going underneath and he's seeing the same thing mm. And it's said through a different medium, through a different language, through a different uh, perspective. But yeah, it's the, sa it's the same vision. They both connected. And I think this is important. I think we have to start looking for our commonalities. What do we have in common with these other traditions? What do we have in common with them? And not compromising your own. Still always appreciating your own, but appreciating like, wow, there's a lot. There's a lot we have. There's a lot we have in connection with. We live in a culture that's focused on finding the difference and it keeps everybody <clears throat> divided, keeps everybody angry, keeps everybody hateful, keeps everybody pointing fingers. So good one. <laughs> here's the here's the quote. I was standing on the highest mountain of them all and round about beneath me was the whole hoop of the world. And while I stood there, I saw more than I can tell, and I understood more than I saw. No, that that's you see, it's that, like that's, that's not casual cool. language, yeah. right? Like I, you know, I um, what do you say? And while I stood there, I saw more than I could tell. Oh man, I can't even tell you like what I saw. No, no, no. You know, he saw more than he can tell. The words can't express fully what he, he was seeing. Hmm. And I un and I understood more than I saw. Right. There was some like, deeper intelligence here. He, he was putting it all together. He was looking down from that perspective, right? This is zooming out. He stood on the top of this mountain. He's looking down. Like Elk spoke English? Yeah. These guys, were, these guys were great. He was like a writer and everything. Mm. For I was seeing in a sacred manner the shapes of all things in the spirit and the shape of all shapes as they must live together like one being. Okay. This is it's like it's like they're in tune. And by the way, and I joked about this before, but I'm probably serious too. It's not like every Native American was a black elk. You know what I mean? These are like special <laughs> spiritual I'm sure there was a lot of like, you know, they had they respected their they had their brahmanas. They had their right? brahmanas, right? It's the respected like, teachers and uh what do they we call always them? say it's like oh the Native Americans say this. Not all of them said that. I'm sure there were some bad guys out there too. I'm sure there were some criminal Native Americans and some, you know, some you know nefarious ones. But Black Elk, some of these guys are like deep philosophers, deep visionaries, and the the stuff that comes out of this, the stuff that comes out of his mouth is amazing. Prabhu, can I share with you what I just learned about Black Elk on Wikipedia? No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Mara's on this. Thank you, Mara. You see, what when you she's got? not just back there knitting away, she's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right she's a little computer, bit more focused. She's on the edge of her seat, too. Right. Um, he was from a long lineage of medicine men and healers within his family from his father and uncles. And then when he was nine, he fell very ill and was unconscious for many, many days. And he had this vision that he then, like, when he was a little bit older, he shared this vision of what happened when he was laying there unconscious. Jesus came. Part of it. <laughs> maybe Just that's why I'm spiritual, Kostuba. Maybe because of that Jesus meeting I had. 
Um, first of all, it hasn't been confirmed that Jesus came. There's no one has any memory of that, Dragonath. <laughs> Except for you. <laughs> <laughs> Even the eyewitness doesn't remember it. I remember her telling me that. Sure. Okay, she sure, remembers it right now. Yeah. She remembers it now. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that This testimony now has been pressured, right? I don't know. If it's the reliable. testimony has not been pressured. She actually <laughs> remembers it. She said, why don't you remind me you were going to ask me? I was unprepared for this. We haven't talked about it in many decades. OK, it, it is true. And I could have a witness come back <laughs> on okay. and tell you about my Jesus <laughs> communion. I had uh, you might have even named me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he, or, he may have he may have um, established you as the rock of his church for the Maybe the 21st maybe, century. Here. Maybe we're doing a lot of stuff here on the podcast. Maybe. <laughs> right. It's a real story. I'm not making it up. I met Jesus. I mean, I was okay. a baby, but I met him. I must have met him. I was there. Well, now, who did Black Elk meet, Mara? OK, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he had to wait till he was nine. I was like, just came out of the womb and Jesus visited me. All right. True. <laughs> I guess maybe you're superior to Black Elk. Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> I'm just saying me and Black Elk have a lot in common. See the commonality. <laughs> Sometimes we meet prophets. You're both very wise men, part-time mystics. Yes. He's probably a botanist also. He's probably a you're, botanist. You're He's a medicine of, man. Those are botanists. medicine man. That's what I'm saying. You're medicine uh, man. Yep. No. Just the medicine that you use is, is mostly processed snacks. But uh, <laughs> still. I feel bad. <laughs> give, me a, give me a cupcake. Uh, it's a type of medicine. Okay, Miss Mara, please. No, I think that that was most of what I wanted to say. Wait, what happened? He was well, nine o'clock and what happened? He has a whole history, though. He like, was he's a writer or something, right? And well, yeah. So then he um, met this writer, Nehart. Nehart. That's right. And he got interviewed. Right. And so Nehart is, um, wrote about it in Black Elk Speaks. Black Elk Speaks. Well, I, I, I missed something. I was in my Jesus thing. He was not. What happened? He was sick and then he got better. And what happened? Something when mystical. he was nine, he got very sick and had the vision. And that's what this nugget came from. What was the vision? What was the vision? Oh, this vision here, this nugget. Yeah, where he was like met with spirits who were very, very kind. And they took him to like the center of the earth. And he saw and felt these things that he couldn't even describe. And then so when he was a little bit older, he shared this visit vision with some of the other medicine men. Okay. Yeah, and they, and like they were also moved by the greatness of the vision, and then he shared it with writers later when he met them. But I feel like I might be a medicine man. I feel like that's part of my. I think you might need medicine, but that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. okay. So let's let's go back to this nugget. Okay, ready, Ragnar? Yes. Let's let's break it down a little bit. <laughs> medicine man could be understood in different ways you know yeah he's yes. a real medicine man <laughs> he's on drugs all the time <laughs> prescription okay. medicine man um, okay he's standing on the highest mountain he's looking down he's seen the whole world in the hoop oh. and then he stands there he says he saw more than he can tell, and he understood more than than he could see. That's this is the point, right? Mm -hmm. Whether we're a, a, an empiricist, you know, uh, let's say an empiricist scientist, whether we're just a person that's not inquiring deep, we'll see the surface, we'll analyze the surface, we'll develop convictions about the surface. These bhakti texts and these traditions, like the tradition that Black Elk was in, they were encouraging us to slow down a little bit look at nature contemplate life hear from spiritual texts or spiritual sources and really consider um what what's beneath the surface level right mm -hmm. now he says when he got beneath that surface level he said i saw more than i can tell and i understood more than i could than i saw for i was seeing now this language is interesting i was seeing in a sacred manner the shapes of all things in the spirit. Okay, so, you know, commonly when we're hearing about Lord Vishnu, particularly when I'm hearing from Black Elk, I'm thinking of Vishnu, not Krishna. I don't know, you know, I, right. my doubt is that he had vision into that realm. But th this vision of within this universe, understanding who Vishnu is, Vishnu is the one who is within everything and everything is within him. Right. So when he says, "For I was seeing in a sacred manner, 
the shapes of all things in the spirit. He was understanding that there's this one great spirit, right? Who's tying it all together. Mm. We say that, and we were talking about this yesterday, right? That there's a, there's a soul, just as the soul within our body spreads its awareness throughout every millimeter of our body, our consciousness. So if you touch my little toe, I'm aware. I'm just this tiny little spark, tiny, tiny. Mm. We can't even measure how tiny I am within this body. But if you touch my toe, I'm aware. My awareness is spread there. So through his ex Vishnu expansions, the one Vishnu that's the soul of the entire universe, Maha Vishnu, or, or uh, Garbo Dakshai Vishnu, he expands into every atom of the existence. His awareness through, through this form of Vishnu enters every atom of existence. That's the great spirit. And every shape is made of his energy. And his awareness is invested within every shape that exists. Mm. Right? And, and I believe that this is what he was saying. He was seeing how it's all connected. It's all tied together. Yeah, yeah it's a good... It, it, it's interesting. Um... It, it, just, it's almost like a type of Brahman thing. realization. Yeah, or, or yeah, Paramatma realization. Or par, yeah. And he says, and the shape of all shapes as they must live together like one being. Yeah. I was thinking, imagine if, and I don't know if there were proselytizers of that thought when, uh, when uh, the colonists came to America. I wonder if the Native Americans influenced them in any way in their spiritual practices wouldn't that be interesting well we always hear certain people that kind of join their communities there is the also, oftentimes you know that when there'd be a wars or something there would be a you know they'd, they'd kidnap a child you know <laughs> i don't have to be kidnapping a child <laughs> <laughs> no they kidnap a child and there's many stories you can just google um <laughs> children living with native americans and they raise them that tradition and then they want to and then later they say okay we want that child back and there's like the child's like no 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 these are my people no, these are my people now these are my people now yeah matter of fact there is mara Mar search that that book. happens with there's the wolves too there. though right? <laughs> it happens with wolves too they don't want to come back the wolves are their parents mara search like there's a few very famous one who they've written, written biographies, I think, um, okay. about living with Native Americans. <clears throat> okay, All right. let's now go in, Mara. Mara, you can jump back in with that value. This is great to have Mara, like, back, like, on it, you know? Yeah, she's on the edge of her seat instead of kicking back, shrubbing them, shrubbing them away. Yeah. yeah just, you know, cap like a, some kind of, like, capitalist just pumping out the, the scarves, you know? For, as a oh, business, as a ow. business operation, you know. No, no, we need you here, Mara. Right? Focus, <laughs> Mara. Uh, anyway. Okay, we're gonna read the verse. Yeah, here's the verse. No, here's the uh, much introduction. Rayanam namaskritiyanaram chayvanarotamam devim sarasvatim yasam tatojayam madiriyat. Before we cite the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prayesh vabhadresu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati utama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki by regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated in loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Nyena Tazmaye Shri Gurveen Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. And, and then Jesus were, came. <laughs> and then Jesus came. So very quickly I was enlightened. <laughs> and my teachers and Jesus are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisance. He's at their lotus feet. By the way, that is a pretty amazing story. We didn't hear this story, Raghunath. Well, Nobody on. remembers it. She remembers it. She needed a memory refresher. Give her a break. She's 97 years old. <laughs> I'm not okay, blaming so her. She forgets things sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't forget Jesus coming, though, right? In, in, in the life of a 97, there are a lot of magical things happening for a 97 year old <laughs> okay. lady. And she might forget that one that was. 57 years ago but just the fact she that probably jesus had different came. avatars coming for each seven of her children but i got gonna, jesus jesus didn't just come like like the wise men the wise the the the, the magi you know like they came 
because the special soul was being born. But just because Jesus showed up doesn't mean that it was like you were some kind of prophet. I, maybe it, I was the Magi. No, maybe they, he came maybe because were the, you were evil maybe, and maybe, he wanted to counteract it. He, we don't well, know why that, he came. Maybe he just I'm not, touched me. Maybe I'm not, he touched me and said, <laughs> you will spread God's grace. I'm not denying I'm not that he saying came. I'm the anointed one. <laughs> Sounds like you but are. Maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it. Grandma Terry said. I'm saying. just saying it's very possible. <laughs> it could be. I'm not going to argue with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. He betrothed me. That was, what about that? That was pretty interesting. Betrothed, yeah. the age. Started laughing. He said, "Betrothed when they were well, you know, born." In all seriousness, Raghunath. In all yeah. seriousness, no. Yes. Because I don't think we're gonna get to our verses today. We Grandma will. Terry yeah. shared too much with us, and we got we got to get into this tomorrow. Right. Th there's so much to get into on this topic. Or right. what's the seriousness? Huh? Oh, what's in all seriousness, about what your mother shared, she showed us a different world that we didn't live in. You know, like it, we, it, you a you moment ago. It, it was a like, moment ago in time. You and I growing up. Um, just like your your mother was, and your mother is much older than, like you are the last of how many, or not the second to last I'm of how many? I'm six kids? out of seven kids. Six so she was born in 1926. So my family was smaller, all right? I was the second of two children. Yeah. So, like your parents are much older than my parents. That's what I'm saying. Like your mother is 96. I think my father is uh, maybe like 83 or 84. Yeah, so it's an, a higher, uh, older generation. A bit, a bit older generation, but not that much different, right? Like, my grandparents, your your mother yeah. reminds me of my grandparents. Yeah. And, you know, um, and my grandfather went to church every day. Right? Every day. And they had, they had very different um, ideas about, you know, the mating rituals and marriage and uh, the role of spirituality. You know, what... What your what your mother was describing it was like there were elders within the religious community that were concerned that kids would meet each other boys and girls would meet each other in a quote unquote wholesome way right not just like yeah. whatever they call it shifting sliding left or right whatever swiping yeah you know? it wasn't swiping we're in some bizarro world now okay here we go let's get more yeah. on this yeah uh, first of all let's get to the jesus story what happened oh you want to get my mom back on the well, show here? Oh, well, I thought you were bringing her on. Okay, no, she's just walking around. So I said, sit down. She, okay. They want to really know if this Jesus story is true. Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, what happened with Jesus? What What happened? Now, hold it. Has this witness been tampered with? I'm concerned. We got a different story. No, I was on the show. <laughs> you know, that happened so long ago. You were just born. You're just born. You know? Yeah. But I remembered that I do. That was fifty-seven years ago. Could be. Well, I'm fifty-seven <laughs> years old. Uh -huh. Did Jesus give any information about me? Why did he no. come? No, no, he was just good to me. Oh, he was coming for her, Ragnar. Good to me. Well, he might have had a message for her. Maybe she didn't pick up on it. What was like? The your son is the anointed one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, but he was just there to comfort you. Yes. You know, you just had a baby. You've been through a very serious time. Mm. So these are the things that come came to, to you. help you, support you. Came to help and this support. baby was going to be a challenge. This baby was going to be, this you know, baby. a handful. He tends to think that I'm a ch I was a challenging child. I think I was a fun loving child. Well, you know, because your sisters went away to Europe for two years and they missed you a lot. They used to write me, please write a letter, tell me what's going on. The kids, the girls were, were both in France because they wanted to learn the French language. <laughs> this goes into more things. Yeah. <laughs> so, and my, my- The question is, was I a problem or was I easy? I didn't say problem, I said a handful. No, he was a real show off. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Go f that right. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> but but a good heart. Always a good heart, right? Good heart. Good, good heart. heart. Yes. Okay. There we go. That's what we wanted to hear. <laughs> okay. 
no, any other prophets, saints, or mystics visit you? That's what I'm aware of. Not that she's aware of. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a different time, a different it, culture. It, the dating my, rituals. I love yeah. the idea what she said about her father. Father's got to meet the guy. Yeah. And she was being a little sassy there and whatever in the 30s, bringing home pushing, pushing the multiple borders. men, not not marrying that first man. Yeah, but, but here's my point. He oh, was go ahead. so old fashioned. Like he didn't want me to ride a bike. He wouldn't let us ride a bike. I had five sisters. We were all girls in our house. So six girls. How many bathrooms? One. <laughs> Those days you were lucky to get one. <laughs> and you shared it with your neighbor. That was another one. Okay, so five girls, you weren't, weren't allowed to ride bicycles because... Because they didn't want you riding off to different neighborhoods? No, he didn't want us to ride a bike at all. I think it's just sort of like the... Uh, it was unladylike at the, the time. You know, like in women, the women in, in India, that traditionally they don't ride motorcycles. They sit side saddle. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of like... So maybe it would hurt our bodies. <laughs> maybe. Mara, do you no, ride protective. a bicycle, Mara? Don't let don't let Mara on that bicycle, right? Do you, <laughs> Does it? Do you, do you, care you ride about a bicycle, Mara? <clears throat> yeah, I've yes, rode a bicycle before. You have. Okay. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? <laughs> okay. Let's. Did so your mom play point. tennis a lot when she was young too? I played tennis in my teens. Oh. We started in my teens. I played a lot of tennis. It was a popular game, I think, back then. I love it. I love it. Now Where did you play? Tony is playing. At McCarran Park. Where do you? Okay, you guys are squirreling away here. <laughs> right. Let's keep this focused. Okay, well, here's my point, Ragnar. This is what I want to share. Okay. That I think people from our our time, they will hear some of this and think, oh, my God, what a repressive time. You weren't free to do what you wanted to do. You know? Anything. But, you were very much tied at home. Yeah, and so my point is, you know, there's there's going to be bad and good in all times. But there's a lot here, you know, maybe there were certain repressive things or, or oppressive things from the past that needed to be cleared up. But there's a lot of insight, too. It's a different way of life. And a lot of it has some spiritual background that can be very valuable. You know, it, it would be nice for a lot of people today, I think, to be raised where like the, the elders got together. and They said, let's create different clubs Let's create different dances. Let's see that we can, you know, bring the kids together in a nice way where they're not getting into trouble. They're not getting depressed. They're not going to psychiatrists. And, you know, it's like it, it was there was a lot of thought put into it. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you hear listen to anything I just said? I, I did. I did. I'm trying to be very fluid with this microphone back and forth. OK. In case you, there's some words of wisdom. I, want, I would like to hear some, some prophecies words of drop from your mother. Do you have any uh, words of wisdom for us? Final last words of wisdom or uh, do you give us some advice? You've lived for ni almost 97 years. Can you give we have a lot of people here? They're trying to live their life, live a better life, live a, you know, improve the quality of their life. Remember, we were very poor. We had nothing. We didn't even have little toys to play with. What'd you play with? Well, I know I had a little co like a coffee pot. <laughs> that I used to put it on the side. I used to put it on the We can't hear it. I mean, but that's the kind of you played at home with whatever you had. Okay, so what's a, what's some advice? What's some good advice that we can practically take with us for the course of the day? You know, or you know, words of what have you what have you learned that I could apply to my life right now? Well, there are a lot of a lot of things you can do, but, but you have to do it. People put it off and put it off, but it's not good. I mean, there's a lot of help you can ha give people. There are a lot of people who are lonely. They don't know how to make friends. And this is where I think the troubles are. And they <sighs> should have more things for us to do. Even right now where I'm living, we're all complaining there's not enough to do. Mm. And in my age group, we have a couple of people who are 100 years old here. Mm. They're still moving around. They're doing okay. You're doing pretty good. You, and you're definitely a talker. It seems like the entire building here knows you. Yeah, pretty much I'm known. She's quite a like a little mini celebrity. It took her like three days to become one of the more popular people in this building. Well, I came to Babbage Park. It's 
city, yeah. the next town over. Yeah. And I knew almost everybody there. Yeah, everybody knows her in the neighborhood. Sometimes I just find her wandering the streets in New York. <laughs> she knows she stops and talks to everybody. That's nice. Outside. Yeah. All right. Let's let's move to Mara now. Mara's got some also takeaways from the show here. Let's see. Very interesting to takeaways today. So Mara listens to the show. This is what she does. She works behind the scenes. She listens to the show and then she writes little quotes down that, you know, we can take with us in the course of the day. What do you, what do you got for us, Mara? Bhakti is taking over New York City. Bhakti is right. taking. Bhakti means devotion, love of God. Needed very badly. Yeah, it is needed. It is needed. Write down your special Jesus stories because you might forget them. <laughs> good point. That's a good takeaway. Write down your special Jesus stories. Where to? Just write them down on a journal or something. Okay. Cupcakes are a type of medicine. Cupcakes can be medicine. What do you think? <laughs> Cupcakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slow down. Look at nature. Reflect and consider what's beneath the surface. Okay. Yeah, I do. Very good. Okay. Vishnu is within everything. God is within everything. Absolutely. See, she sees it. <laughs> it's all connected. What's that? Everything and... is everything is connected. It sure is. And <laughs> Ragu is a real medicine man. <laughs> That's I'm right. a real medicine man. What do you think about that? Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. I'll say it again. Amen. Prescription medicine, man. <laughs> uh, thank you, Grandma Terry. And thanks for everybody for joining. You're a great grandmother, Terry, now. Yeah. She's a great grandmother, Terry. And she's got lots of grandchildren. And she's been a great mom throughout these years. Stuba, it's great to hear your voice again. It was great hanging out with you this weekend. Mara, thanks for everything. She made it back home last night. What do you think of Mara? Good, oh. isn't she? Nice lady. How did I get how did I get a nice lady like Mara in my life? How did I get a nice lady like Mara in my life? You're lucky as I am. Ah. <laughs> uh, and I, my friend, am having a meeting with Radna Swami right now, Kastuba. What do you think about that, Kastuba? Wow, that's great. Go to the Bhakti Center? Go to the Bhakti Center. going to go for a little walk. Uh, Battery Park, I'm going to walk all the way up there. Looking forward to it. Um, anyway, thanks for everybody for joining us. Check out my Instagram profile, Linktree. It's got all the events we're doing at the farm this summer. Uh, really looking forward. It's something about coming together in person, like the Catholic Carol Camp. Who knows? You could meet your husband there at Super Soul Farm. It's happened before. Yeah, Lori, Ch Lori, Lori Pag and the Chief met there. No, they no, were no. both there uh, doing a yoga class. Really? And then the Chief looked at Lori and said, this is my soulmate. I have to marry this woman. No, you're lying. I'm lying about that one. Why are you lying married. like that? They've been married for years. They've been married for years. But love does happen at Super Soul Farm, Mara. You know that. That's true. We know people falling in love there. We know people. We know people. People are falling in love we there even know at the some present recent. moment. We even know even some recently recent. people are falling in love. I don't want to mention any names, but people are falling in love there. Make a dreams come true. Super Soul Farm. Make find your soulmate. Super Soul Super Soulmate Farm, we could call it. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I could just betroth you to someone there without you. Maybe even you got to start betrothing younger people, Ruggie. Yeah, bring your children. I'll betroth children. <laughs> you have to have a thorough examination of the parents first. You didn't just right. You didn't get betrothed to anyone, right? You had to know the entire family. No, I did. Nope. <laughs> Not your husband. Oh yeah. How did they? How did you? How did Dad get past the uh, scrutiny of the your father? Your dad did. Your dad like my father. You can't hear him. 
didn't give him much trouble. Your father liked my my dad. Dad. My mother too. So he passed the test. Did you know his family? No. That's not good. That's not good. Well, you know what? When I I never met his mother, I didn't meet anybody. Oh boy, we wanted to get married. We know each we knew each other three months. You were whoa, 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 whoa. you were married after three months? When you know, you know, Ragnar. When you know, you know. Did he? He didn't have any other girlfriends, did he? No. He had no other girlfriends. My father never dated anyone except my mother. That simplifies everything. It's sim- What's that? He didn't, he didn't. He didn't know many girls. It makes it easy to give your whole mind and your whole heart. It really chased me. And I used to go on a lot of vacations because I had a four, four week vacation. Okay, do not, men, do not take this literally. Do not chase women. It's not a good thing, but my father did chase my mother. He really did. Okay. He came wherever I was and looked for me. He'd find out where I was going to be, and he'd come up. And then- we call that a stalker, Mom. <laughs> he was not a stalker, but he didn't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Mara, can you look up the definition of stalker, please? That's where Rugganoff gets his determination from. <laughs> <laughs> he was very anxious to get married. Nice. nice. Because, you know, he had a brother who was very, very well. His brother kept saying, Who's going to marry you? Nobody wants you. Did you ever hear that? That's horrible. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> it was just like a sort of a mean older brother who would tease him. He was, he was the little boy of a, 11 kids or something. Mean. Yeah. Uncle, uncle, uh, we don't have to say, we don't have to say it on the show. But yeah, then he'll say, where'd you find her? He'd say, where'd you find her? Okay, and how many years were you married? No, we were married about 35 years because daddy died young. Yeah, he died pretty young. Died at 64. What? He was 50? No, I was in my 50s when he died. Really? He was only three years older than me. He was 61? I was 62. Oh, my God. That, that, that could sense. be me. That means he was he was 40 when you were born. She was 40. So my dad was 43. Okay. He was born in 23. Right, 23. He would have been 100 this year. He would have been 100 this year. Wow. Centurion. Wow. You know that you when um, Grandma Terry, the, I heard that when you turn 100 years old, you get from the president of the United States, you get a message from them. A, a message from the president of the United States when you turn 100. Did you ever hear that? Yeah, I think I have heard that. Okay. That's good. It's coming. It's coming. Mm-hmm. It's coming. You're you're a you're a hop skip. You've got nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with your body and or your mind. You're sharp like a whip. What what about what about warnings, mom? There's a people out there who need warnings. Swimming warnings. Any swimming warnings for people? A lot of people out there swimming. No, I I I'm not a swimmer. Did you ever swim? No. That's the advice. Don't go swimming. Don't go swimming. She's never swam. Don't swim. I used to go in the pool if I could stand in and you do you did you ever learn to ride a bike? No. No. No, I didn't do that, but I did roller skate. Okay. My mother had to talk my father into that too. That was pretty sassy to roller skate back then. I loved it. We were like eight kids on the block. <laughs> were those the kind of roller skates that you kind of tied onto your regular shoes? No. You know those kind? They were loose. And I saved my pennies to buy. They were 58 cents. Wow. <laughs> Remember those rugby? You tie them onto your... Yeah, I think that's what they were. She, uh, you, they were metal, and you tie them to your shoes. Yeah. yeah. They, they weren't the boot boot roller skates. skates. Those came later. And the wheels Harry weren't as good. Across the street, Jewish boy. Yeah. And he came roller skating with us, and Joey was roller skating with us. We had about eight kids. On the block, we, how old were you? Gang, that was a gang, like uh, 12. 
13. And do you had a, a roller skating accident, didn't you? Not really. I just thought you broke your teeth. No, not there. Okay. All right. Well, I want to, everybody wants to hear about the famous story about the girl on your block jumping rope who choked on a peach, a peach pit. We want to hear about that. And we need a warning because there's a lot of people out there probably now jumping rope with various stone fruits. Want to share that story? Yeah, I do. Um, I don't know. I think I was like 12. And this little girl was younger than I. And she was jumping the rope. We would play rope a lot. And uh, all of a sudden, she fell while oh. she was jumping. And luckily, there was a doctor next door. He came oh. running out. She died on, she was eating a peach. She died on the pit. Oh. She really did. And they didn't know I, the Heimlich maneuver, maybe. Then. They didn't know the Heimlich maneuver back then? No. no. And I have been rem reminded constantly about any time I think about jumping rope, never, never to chew on stone fruits. You shouldn't be eating them outside like that. Right. You know, really, when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be eating them outside. Come on. <laughs> okay. Here's another great story you told me about the dangers of traveling, traveling to tropical places where there are monkeys. You want to share that story? It's a real story. You might as well share because hey, you could save one life today, Mom. If there's 10,000 people listening, I never had monkeys. No, you never had them, but you warn us. You warn me on a regular basis. Because they they'd steal from you. Well, tell me what else they did at the honeymoon. You were the cliff. The cliff. I, you know what? I can't remember these stories you're telling me back. You can't remember. You've told me these stories 100 times, Mom. Be careful around monkeys that could push you off a cliff. Oh. Yeah, they you had a friend. They could do anything. Don't let me milk this. He's Kostuba's going to think I'm making this up. I think you make most of this up. I don't make this up for or, years. Or you, you warned me naturally. about be careful about the monkeys. You had friends that were pushed off a cliff on their <laughs> honeymoon by a monkey. Sure. Okay, that's sure. right. That's right. You see, thing. you you influence her testimony, Raghunath. That's how this works. <laughs> she doesn't remember. She's 97. She can't remember these valuable pearls of wisdom. <laughs> but what about I remember. diving into shallow water. Yeah, what about swimming? Should you just swim anywhere? No, you know what? We had in our neighborhood, Mayor LaGuardia built three pools there. He was a good mayor. When he was in office, we loved him. And they made a he made a big 16 feet pool. He did a three to six pool and a baby pool. And I think that pool is still there. McCarran Park. McCarran Park. Yeah. Wow. It's still there. It's still there. You know, uh, also, uh, you were a Dodgers fan. Oh, yes. Let's oh, bring this real Dodgers. mundane now. OK, Dodgers, Dodgers. Where did you see the Dodgers? We used to go to Ebbets Field. Ebbets Field was in Flatbush. Dance. Where was it? Dance. Where was Ebbets Field? In Brooklyn. Where? In Flatbush? Prospect Park someplace. Okay. Yeah. You know, I wasn't a big traveler then. <laughs> to go to Flatbush. Flatbush. <laughs> um, wow, okay. she must have seen the greats play, like Jackie Robinson and we saw a lot Sandy of Koufax. Games. I went with my two sisters. We were all Dodger fans. Did you yeah. skip school? No, never. Never. Okay. Never. Never. <laughs> never. Because they played school. during the day back then, right? They played, yeah, but we we used to go, I don't know when it was, daytime, not nighttime. Your father go? No, my father didn't go. No oh, brothers. Yeah. Very different living with all girls. Was it safe? Sound... Was, was it safe back then? Yeah, it was. We they kept the neighborhood home. safe, Rogo. The neighborhoods were safe. Yeah. Wow, a lot of valuable information there, Mom. Swimming. You always told me a story, never swim in water you're not familiar with. That was an ongoing mantra out of her mouth on a regular basis. Never swim because she had friends that 
They went to somewhere in the world. The kids went swimming. They never come back. And they never came back. So maybe that's a good takeaway today, people. If you're not familiar with the place especially, you're swimming, better you just not summer. swim there. Better especially you just we, not swim there. Especially there could be enter, currents. There could be currents. I'm saying, right? Was, especially as we enter the summer. What's that? Especially as we enter the summer. It's good to remind people of this. Yeah, during the summer, a lot of people like to go on the water, and then who knows what they're getting into. Yeah. Well, I didn't go much to the water. I went to the McCarran pool a few times. Okay. Um, Coney Island? Did you go to Coney Island? Not too often. Not too often. Okay. Too far? Yeah. I wouldn't go by myself anyway. Yeah. There's a lot of crazy people down there at Coney Island, too. Yeah. Right? Any other old New York stories you want to retell? Whatever else happened in New York back then. Delancey Street, the Williamsburg Bridge. Yeah, but you know, I wasn't too familiar with those places. I didn't go far from home when I was younger. You would live in Brooklyn and hardly go to Man the father would go work in Manhattan, maybe, and everyone would stay in Brooklyn. Well, my right? father worked in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. What'd your father do? He worked in a fur factory. Ooh. <laughs> he could not get a job. We, he could not get a job. It was bad times. Wow. Tough times. My mother had a cousin who owned a, a, a factory, a fur factory. They, they were the rich people in our house. Wow. We had nothing. My mother used to get the salt bags from the stores when you bought salt in the big bags. They'd have, they'd, they'd give them to the people. My mother used to make us dresses out of them. You used to... <laughs> <laughs> a bag of salt. <laughs> They used to wear a dress out of the salt bag. This is so we don't want to hear you complaining about anything, Raghunath. Okay? Yeah, Mara, I don't want to hear any complaints out of your mouth or you're going to go. You're going to start wearing a salt bag around. Matter of fact, we should start selling salt bag. Mara, maybe you could uh, sew or knit some salt bag outfits or bag. I don't know right. if they sell salt in bags like that anymore. A rice in India, bag. They do. Now they sell yeah, they rice do. bags. Well, you could use them. Yeah. Yeah. My mother just would make a little seam with a sewing machine. Mm. So that was good. Just cut out, cut out holes for the arms. <laughs> the bags a lot till they looked presentable. And then we'd have a dress. Good summer dress. You know, it's it's just good to it's it's almost like going to a museum talking to you, mom. It's like going to a museum and hearing that if you're a history fan, this stuff is valuable information. Could could you swim in the in the river then? I wouldn't go in the river. Would other people swim there? I, I don't remember going to a river, the okay. East River. No, 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 I would never go there. OK, <laughs> so that's not a thing. It seems like it's a thing. Um, uh, trying to read if other people have. Oh, the Heinlich maneuver wasn't invented until 1974. That was Mara so, right there. Okay, so that was a reason why that peach, the peach pit, could have saved her. The Heinlich maneuver. AJ Sullivan writes, "Peaches are an indoor fruit." <laughs> it's not funny. AJ. Right there. It's not funny. That was so sad. I'm sure it was sad. Um, let's see. My husband and each other for three months. Okay, Martine. Martine, uh, who listens to the show on a regular basis. I think Martine's. How old is Martine? I don't. Are we allowed to say on the show someone's age? But anyway, <laughs> Martine's older than me, and she's very sixty-seven. Wise. Sixty-seven. She looks she good said, for sixty-seven. She, she looks great. Martine. She's a yogi. Martine I, says, my husband and I knew each other for three months, too, and lived two, uh, and lived on two continents. And here we are 41 years later. See? All right. When Martine. you know, you know. When you know, you know. Three months. Oh, Mom, you got a lot of love on this message board. There's 50 people. You got anything else to say? What else? What, what other? We've got her here. Let's pick her brain, whatever she's got. <laughs> was to uh, travel with dad. When I met him, I was working in a very large law firm. 
as are you a oh. lawyer? Were you a lawyer? Secretary. 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 Okay. And he he had a job as a textbook salesman. Like a, a school book salesman. Yeah. Or okay. like hardcore brace or something like that. A big corporation. So he asked me to leave my job. I was there nine years. And so I could travel with him. So I used to go with him on his job. And we had all of New York State to sell to. So wow. Dad used to sell school books to schools. Right. And he was a traveling he was a traveling book distributor like you were, Kostuba. Yeah. And and he travel traveled in a uh, a car. Yeah, well, and, a, and a trailer. They gave him a car first. Okay. And we go in that car and we, we, we'd set up everything. We had one suitcase that carried our pots and pans and our dishes, our forks. So we were set to cook out every night. Wow. So we would go to a hotel or a motel, stay there for the night. We'd cook our dinner in there. What did you do in the course of the day while he was out selling? Well, I had, oh, I first had one child. Oh, you had a baby. Was, okay, there we go. And then they had the second child, and she came with us, too. And in those days, there were no paper diapers, I want you to know. Oh, uh, I can't even, I can't even imagine having a kid without a paper diaper. And actually, I did cloth diapers for the first kid in a real move towards romantic, organic living. And then it was like, I cannot do <laughs> this. That was a big job. But it was fun. We went around to different areas, and we were at different places in upstate New York. Upstate. All right, and you no, had a little. Not. They had a little camper, and they lived in the camper. That's fun. You know what I heard from my father? I don't even know if you this. He read Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman. You ever read that book? It's a really great book. I haven't read that. And it changed his life, and he gave up and he went back to school. And he became a uh, high school teacher. That's about a Brooklyn salesman, right? It's about a salesman and and and, and the, the tediousness of existence as a salesman that he grows old and dies. And he, I, I, from what I understand, he didn't want to be that person. Death wow. of a salesman. Check it out. It's a, it's a drama. I'm familiar. Good story. Yeah. It was, they had a play on Broadway. No, no, yeah. Raghunath, we're getting some requests to hear about Willie Nelson. And oh, Willie Jennings. Let's hear about Willie Nelson. You now you worked for the manager of Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings. Who else was in that? A couple of other guys. Waylon Jennings, yeah. Willie Nelson. I never saw them, but they would call in. That was the most exciting job I ever had. <laughs> of course it was. You were sending them boxes of cocaine. <laughs> I know. I was saying it was a more it was more exciting than any job I've ever had. Be quiet about it. No, I have to. I have to. Uh, really, to Willie Nelson, uh, and that Neil, who the the boss. Are we allowed to say his name? I don't know if you can say this publicly, but yeah, don't, that's what I don't want to say. Erase that from the files. <laughs> but the boss, the manager of Willie Nelson. Yeah, he was. He was very good to me. And when my husband had his trouble in the hospital, he was the one who called me and he said, are you going to sue? And I said, no. He says, are you out of your mind? He said, who's going to take care of you when you get older? Mm. He says, when you're ready, you call me. And I did. There was a malpractice when my father was in the hospital. Oh. Really bad malpractice. Yeah. Yeah. And so any 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 stories you want to share about uh, Willie or what it was like, Willie, and then you got fired all of a sudden. It was quite random. You want to tell that story? A very interesting story. What happened with Willie Nelson's manager? So she's she's the secretary in Connecticut for Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings and a, a slew of other countries. This is before anybody even heard of Willie Nelson. When I what had time? Willie Nelson belt buckles. I didn't even know who he was. Nobody knew who he was. No, he was just people knew when no. and when. In the, know, in the 70s, yeah, everybody totally in the country him. world knew, but the country world didn't really hit New York, did it? People knew. Okay. My boss sent me next door. That's where they kept their supplies, <clears throat> in another office. He sends me over there. He says, go, go get this, this, and that, and take whatever you want. 
He was very generous. Wait a second. What supplies? Are we talking about the drugs yet? No, no, no I'm not talking about drugs. OK, let's talk about <laughs> why you got fired and what happened. It's a good story, Mom. I tell it all the time. But hearing it from your mouth is going to be hopefully it'll be better. OK, no, no using names. Just say the boss, your loving boss told you. Yeah. Uh, one day his wife came in. She says, Terry, I have some bad news. I said, what is it? She says, we have to let you go. I couldn't believe they were saying that to me because I worked so hard. And, you know, he would have maybe 12 phones. And if back before you had, uh, you know, those press buttons where you can ch change lines, you have 12 Dial. different phones on your desk. Gadgets. But I would get all the phone calls. And if I gave him somebody he didn't want, that would be the end of it. You don't wow. dare make a mistake. So you didn't make mistakes. He liked you. They loved you there. No, what? It was a good job. Okay. So what happened? She came in. She said, we have to let you go. Yeah. And I couldn't understand why I worked so hard for them. So I, I left there. And also the girl, the bookkeeper was let go. All right. So they started firing all their employees. They're good, dedicated yeah. employees. And, so that, and I learned it later that they didn't want me to get in trouble with the police. Uh -huh. And that's what I learned. But in the beginning, I was very angry about it all. But they were doing you a favor. They were doing you a favor. Well, because what happened? What happened? They got caught doing something? Well, they had Miles Davis was also one of them. And Miles had a big apartment house in the city. and They owed all the taxes on it. So they, the, the tax people came in one day and they said, you've got to get pay some of those taxes. So they send me to pay them for like eight thousand dollars. Not so bad. Back then, it was a lot more. Yeah. yeah. And they still owed more. So he said, see if we could. Do, it, would that be enough? They said they would take that for now. So OK, but what happened to the drugs? You were sending drugs. You can say it. But you just Roganaut, I don't think this ever happened. I think this is what you see. He see, he's not going to believe me, mom. You were selling, sending boxes of drugs <laughs> to <laughs> Willie Nelson. I didn't know that. I know you didn't know. That's called a mule, isn't it? Isn't that the, well, a mule may or may not know, but um, what word? Um, uh, they call it a drug mule. Generally, mule is carrying across borders, I think, you know? Yeah, well, she was just sending it through the U.S. Postal Department. Nothing wrong with that. So they fired her <laughs> because it was all coming down. The Roger, whole thing was the house of cards it all was figured out. The, the Jesus uh, that showed up at your birth, he was also dealing drugs to Willie Nelson, right? Is hey, that that's what not you're funny. Telling? That's not funny. That's not <laughs> tell funny. Us, tell us. We don't know what to believe anymore, Ragnar. Okay, there you go. No, 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 no. Um, he, 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 no, he's, he's confused. He doesn't, under <laughs> very he confused doesn't understand that the whole house of cards fell down basically. And they fired you because you were doing something illegal without knowing about it. All I did was wrap it up and send it to the par parcel post or whatever I had to. Yep. That's how you go to jail. <laughs> Tell me why they fired me. So I couldn't imagine how they uh, let me go. Yeah, but you know what? They were good. They yeah, got you they, were, they let you out. You got off the hook, and one of those guys had to take the rap. <laughs> one of those guys took the rap. Mom, you made it out. You made it out. You didn't. You went through this whole. You raised seven kids. You never went to jail, right? Your kids never went to jail, right? Never. I don't. Th I don't think any of them went to jail. Dad never went to jail. It's been a good run, Mom. You and me. I'm 57. You're almost 97, 40 year split. Still going strong. You got good kids. Your kids all love you. Oh, they're great kids. We got great kids. Do you still spend time down in Florida? We went to Florida recently. And even though I fell about a year ago and broke my hip and I didn't, I can't go back to Florida anymore. And I said, oh, okay. a place there. I said, I want to go back. I have friends there. They kept calling. Closer with the mic, Rago. What do you say? Sorry, sorry. I got the mic. Yeah, I, my voice is too funny. Yeah, so I, I wanted to go to Florida because I had some of those friends writing me 
saying, when are you coming? When are you coming? So I thought it, I wasn't going. Then all of a sudden, my youngest son, Tony, he said, Mom, no, you're going to go to Florida. So he gets it all set up. He had each of my children come to stay with me for four or five days of the week. And so they spent their week in Florida with me. Yeah. And you and he had uh, Carl came to pick me up here from Florida to bring me there. Yeah. So that's how that's my brother. So me and Mara went to visit her for a week. That's nice. Yes. Florida. It's a good place. But they also were pushing her in a chair and the chair dumped and then she got hurt again. <laughs> oh, God. You know, I don't know how I made it after that fall. She's very resilient. She's fallen a couple times. And usually the falls take a person out when they get to your age. But you bounce back. I think God, Jesus, Krishna wants you to be 100 years old. He wants you to get that award from the president. I he think may show up today. Jesus, yeah. Krishna, God. Yeah. I want to see if Krishna appears to her now. She's also danced in many kirtans, Mom. You've come to the farm. At the Bhakti Center, I remember. Yeah. One time. You've been to the Bhakti Center. Yep. I've been all over. Yeah, you've met Radnath Swami a few times and a few times. You've come she's came to Gidanagri. Oh, wow, the farm. I remember at the farm in Pennsylvania, came and visited me. She's she's been around, this lady. I've been around my life. I've yeah. been in Europe so many times. In Europe? Never India. Never India. I almost had her in India once. I thought I was going to get too far. Too far. Too far for me. It was pretty far. I've been to Europe. I went to Spain, uh, England, Italy, France. Anything else? Where is your family from in Italy? They are from uh, um, Abruzzi. Abruzzi. That's is that in Tuscany? No, it's a little south uh, on the uh, on East the uh, east coast. On the east coast. Okay. We went there several times. I also went when I went to uh, Switzerland. But we found the place, the area, but we could not find the church was closed. We could get no information. Oh, you went to Abruzzi. Yeah, she on a, on a trip to Switzerland, she went to Abruzzi. I'm I'm translating this story, <laughs> but they couldn't find the records. Church was closed. That's where yeah. All the records. That's where that all the Baldinis are from. She's Baldini. That's her last name. Baldini. Yeah. Is that where it is? It good rice comes from there or something like that somewhere. I'm thinking of rice. Baldini. I don't know. I just saw her. Not Baldini. Baldini. Abruzzi. People come from there. Good people. She's a good Baldini. Thank you. And you had great parents, right? Your father was Tomasio. Tommaso and her your mom's name was Adeline. Adelina. Adelina Baldini. That's a good name. Mm. What does Baldini mean? Yeah. Baldini, I think it means bald. I'm not positive. A little bald person. Little little, little bald. <laughs> hair. Your father? My father never lost his hair. Okay. That's good to know. I lost mine, so I didn't get that gene. <laughs> Uh, Italy. Okay, I think we're gonna end right now because I have to get on with my day. I have to walk to the Bhakti Center, but that hey, was great. Hey, Rog, I was right. What's that? that? Uh, Rusticella di Abruzzo uh, has chosen and proposed again the most refined types of Italian rice. I think very good rice comes from that area. Abruzzo. Oh, refined rice. Very good rice comes from Abruzzo. Okay, that's good. I mean, she was a Brooklyn girl. She knows Brooklyn better than Italy. Okay. Right? Mara, any questions? Want to wrap this up with any questions, Mara? No, I think I don't want to make you late for your meeting with Maharaj. Okay. All right. It was that nice. Was great, though. Thank you, Grandma Terry. For talking Thank you, Grandma Terry. Thanks, everybody. Look, Mom, you're getting a lot of love here on this message board. Ask her if her family is from Pescara. Do you know where Pescara is? Oh, I don't know. That means yeah. fish. Ragnarok, yeah. Right? New Yorkers often say Italy for Italy. Somebody says, oh, yeah, the main city there is Pescara, Jiva says. She's another a Jewish New Yorker on the show. 
Okay. All right, Bago. Florida. <laughs> Someone else says oh, we love the way you say Florida. That's how we all say it. My kids make fun of me because I say it like that too. Florida. Florida. We're going to Florida. <clears throat> okay, guys. It's a beautiful look. We have a bunch of Italians. We've got Tanya Sonsini. He doesn't get more Italian than that. Okay. Okay. It's a beautiful day for a beautiful day. Let the magic continue to flow. Ciao, everyone. Ciao. Ciao.